Good morning, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Doug is coming over this morning on his rather special triumph. Hi, Doug. She makes a good first impression, huh? What a sound! What a look! Yeah. This is a pretty rare beast in the cul-de-sac. Well, Doug, thank you so much. What <laughs> a thrill. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming over on your yeah. bike. Just an amazing bike. It's just a fabulous, yeah. fabulous bike. Well, I love to show it off. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your bike, how well, you came across it and okay. everything? Well, so this is a 1973 Triumph Hurricane X75. They only made them for one year. They actually only made them for about four months uh, in uh, uh, late uh, 72. This one was made in October of 72. The EPA in the United States said that uh, the pipes were too loud, so they just stopped production. It's actually a BSA, Rocket 3, um, that was modified by an American designer named Craig Vetter of Vetter Fairing and Windjammer Fairing fame. And uh, he did it, I think, in 1969. The head of BSA USA hired him to do something with the Rocket 3, and this is what he did. BSA England thought it was too much. They just, they, oh, they, they were not interested in doing that. You know, the chopper scene was very big. Easy Rider had come out in 69, and so this has the longer forks and the skinny front tire, and, and it's kind of a choppery look. It's a very American thing. And so they never went into production under BSA's name. When BSA went out of business, 72 I think was their last year, and so 73, Triumph had the bits. And near as I can tell, the, the most consistent number is 1,152 were made. I've heard 1,172 and, and a little bit less, but more often than not, it's 1,152. So it, regardless, not many. And so it's technically the last BSA. It has the BSA double down tube frame and this is the Rocket 3 motor, which differs from the Trident in that the cylinder bank is, I think, 30 degrees forward, whereas the Trident went straight up and down. Uh, other than that, internally it's identical. It has the same weird single plate dry clutch. It's basically like an MG car clutch. The, the things that make this not a Rocket 3 are, of course, this tank and seat, which is one piece of fiberglass with a metal tank inside of it. It has a little bit longer forks. It has uh, Bordiani rims. It has this different headlight bracket. It has, of course, those lovely pipes. And uh, the cylinder head is shaped slightly different. So the cylinder head on the Rocket 3 and the Trident, the fins go just straight up and down, whereas these have a little bit more of a bulge, just because just he thought it made it look better, made it look faster. I inherited this bike. A very good friend of mine had it in his garage, and he had had it since the mid-70s. So it was a fairly new bike. It only had um, about 5,000 miles on it. And he had broken the kickstart arm at the top here. I think maybe it fell over um, while it was not moving. I, I don't know. He never really told me. And then he just parked it. I think it probably broke in about 82. I met him in mid to late 80s and kind of peeked in his garage. He had a pile of British bikes and an old uh, a 49 Plymouth business coupe stuffed in this garage in Northeast Portland. And he, you know, I didn't get shot, which is good. Uh, he liked me enough not to shoot me. And that's when I discovered what a Triumph Hurricane was because uh, I'd never heard of one and found out about it. And I just wanted to fix it. The whole time I knew him, I was like, just let me fix them. Uh, Cause it just drove me nuts that he had, he had these bikes that were just sitting. When he died, unfortunately he, he had cancer. Don't smoke kids, don't smoke. Um, or if you do smoke, put me in your will. Yeah. So when he died, he left me the bikes. And I don't know if he blessed me or cursed me. Oh. There's an awful lot of Lucas going on. That's a blessing, my friend. <laughs> yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. You, you must have been very good friends. We were very good friends, yeah. yeah. He was best man at my wedding. And, oh. and uh, his name was Wayne Nalen. And, and, you know, 
I ride these. He, people would ask him what his problem was, and he would say, that guy over there, Doug. And so my license plate frame says Wayne's problem, because that's who I am. So, you know, I got the motorcycles. He left me this bike, two Bonnevilles, a 74 and a 77, and a 69 BSA A65 Thunderbolt. I got the 77 Bonneville running. It had been wrecked. So I got it running by borrowing some parts from the 74, which had the, the whole uh, clutch and transmission were out of it. And it had been sitting for a long time. Uh, so it was too far gone. Got the Bonneville running, it runs great. Next was this, this girl here. And I, I had to rebuild the carbs and I had to seal the tank. I put a new rear tire on it. And then the front tire is actually a date code correct Dunlop MR2. Uh, the original tires were still on it, but they were shot because they'd been on flats. This one, Tom Young had it in his shop and it was it was new old stock. It had never been on a bike and he, he gave it to me. I know that that's more of a miracle than inheriting. <laughs> having Tom Young give you something. <laughs> it has the bolt here through here. So traditional mounting and you can take the seat off and then you undo this and it just kind of, you very gently have to pull, you kind of have to pry this around the frame in the oil bag because it's tight. Um, not the greatest design, but when I took the tank off to do the treatment, that was a nervous, nervous day. They make these tanks actually, they remanufacture almost everything that's hurricane specific, but they're very expensive, very expensive. Like $2,500 for a tank in white so completely unfinished. And then you got to ship it from the UK. And then you got to finish it. The stripes are actually 3M tape. They're reflective tape. Oh, okay. Uh, the fiberglass is, it's not painted, it's a gel coat. So, so it's not paint. And the triple trees are also hurricane specific and they're notoriously <laughs> And they just used a weak alloy. And uh, I had read about that they were cracked. You know, people talk about the original ones being cracked. Well, I, I, examined it pretty closely and found a few cracks and so i ordered from lp williams these are only for hurricane they're not the same on anything else and and when i actually took them apart the the bottom one was it came apart into two pieces oh, yeah that's the right way to find out yeah, about it yes. but these are identical they have the same casting numbers they're just made out of a stronger alloy so and they were pretty expensive but you know i want to ride it but the seat's original, he, he left the seat in the house. So Wayne knew what it was. People who had these yeah. knew what they were. Uh, their values have kind of gotten crazy lately, but, but they were always collectible. And oftentimes um, there's a lot of these bikes that are just, that have almost no miles. Having a low mile example, this one now, she's got 6,200 miles. Um, so I put, I put a little bit on it. But you're not afraid to ride it or anything. You've been, you've been on some nice rides. I've been on some nice rides. I took this up to Vashon last year and that was really fun. And I won uh, Best Unrestored okay. and People's Choice. So, very, very so she's won a couple trophies and I entered her in the one show this last year here in Portland, which really doesn't cater to this type of motorcycle. But they did put it in the main hall rather than in the back corner, which was fine. And yeah, it was, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to do that. And oh yeah, when I, when I first <laughs> got her to run, I've got a video of it. Um, I've got a blog about the motorcycles and about my friendship with Wayne. And, uh, but I, I videoed, had my son. So I didn't try at all. I, I knew I had spark and uh, I adjusted the points and put fresh gas in and I had rebuilt the carburetors, which are pretty simple. Of course, there's three of them, which complicates things, yep. but I had to kick it, I can't remember exactly, but I think 31 times. The first couple kicks, it kind of gave me a little, yeah. okay, I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> and, uh, and when it fired, it shot rust and dirt out the pipes for a second, but it fired and, oh, what a sound. Oh, it was magnificent. It, and you know, I rode it later that day. Uh, you know, I got the carburetor styled in a little bit better and, and now it's pretty much a one or two kick start. May not do that today, of course, because I've said that, but uh, it almost always starts right up. I replaced the points ignition with Boyer Branson yeah. electronic, just because I, I, I don't intend on riding it a whole lot. Um, although I've ridden it more than I thought I would. Uh, I just wanted the reliability of, because it is in that little case, three sets of points and three condensers. And yeah, no, it's, it's crazy.
it's really fun. Craig, Craig Vetter too, I've read some things. He said he made the seat kind of short yeah. so that if you had a female passenger, she would have to, she had to she'd have to move close. scoot close That's to you. Genius. Genius. He was single at the time. Uh, and after he designed this, he found the woman who became his wife. So he says wow. it worked. <laughs> Very, I mean, the mirror isn't correct. Uh, I just had this in a box and the triple trees are repops and the rear tires are repop. You know, I've never taken, I didn't take the top end off. I call it refreshed. I refreshed it, uh, woke her up. And the chrome was all pretty shot, but this British chrome cleans up really nice. You know, the, the Boreani rims shine up real nice with some, with some aluminum polish and. They're awesome. I yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are, they are very wow, sparkly. Doug. And Doug, I, I see your t-shirt. Yes. You? you know, I, I'm sort of the vintage guy there now. I think sure. that they mostly started out with lots of vintage British stuff. But when I show up now, they have the modern classics. But they're, they're, it's a good group. Yeah. yeah, no, they're fun. And they go up, they have a strong presence up at uh, Fashion. Oh, uh, a, a lot of them go up to there. I never knew that was gel coat. I thought it was sprayed, but... Uh, no, it's a gel coat. If you look at it, you yeah. can see it's... And it's kind of turning colors in places, but... Yeah. So if you get a little scratch, will that rub out? Well, the, the discoloration, I don't know. Okay. I think that that's inside. And it may be surface rust from the tank coming up. Coming through. Right. Uh, I really don't know. But if you look, there's chips here. And it's, it's orange all the way through. I mean... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, see those course, yes. big chips and... Yeah. So scratches and things like that, it's just... So how just, narrow it is there. Yeah, it's she's got like a, a yeah. it, it's kind of, she's got a little curvy, bit of a curvy, curvy. Yeah, no, this is, this is when you take, when I took the tank off too, and you put the tank up, it's obvious that it's a female shape. It really, yeah, no, it's a sexy bike. It's a very sexy bike. <laughs> yeah, really in my opinion, my humble yeah, opinion. No, okay, so we're going to open up the seat that's, it's not as, simple you just unscrew these which also are the uh hold the shocks on and then just pulls up and you can see the that's my registration and a couple spare fuses and the battery and then the horn is down in there somewhere and this of course is the frame kind of shows you the original patina too i haven't cleaned in there so Bye, Doug. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, Mike. We'll see ya. You too. Thanks very much for watching guys this has been another tale from the cul-de-sac please remember to subscribe and click the little bell and you'll get a notice whenever i release a new video usually every sunday morning and sometimes during the week